Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Every day, about 5,000 of our Vermont friends and neighbors are positively impacted by the benefits of SASH. SASH stands for Support and Services at Home. It is a nationally acclaimed program that serves older adults well, as well as people with special needs who receive Medicare support. SASH is available statewide as a part of Vermont's all-payer model, or One Care Vermont. Today we'll learn about SASH and how it's been impacted by the pandemic. We'll also meet a Vermonter who is a SASH participant. To get started, I want to welcome Melissa Southwick. Melissa has spent nearly two decades working with older Vermonters, including the past six years with SASH, where she is now the director. Thank you so much for joining us via Zoom. Thank you so much for having us, Fran. So in your words, just describe SASH. Well, as you mentioned, SASH stands for Support and Services at Home. It was created by Cathedral Square in 2009, and then based on the success that we were seeing, we were able to be added to the Blueprint for Health in 2011 and we were able to spread statewide. Um, so that means that SASH is turning 10 this year. And we worked with leadership at each of the designated regional housing organizations that you see on your screen right now um, on the map to expand. So fast forward to today and the SASH model currently embeds a care coordinator and a wellness nurse in over 140 nonprofit affordable housing sites statewide and serves almost 5,000 people. Mm. That has many formalized partnerships around the state, but some that are um, common to all of our panels are the home health agencies, agencies on aging, the designated mental health agencies, housing agencies, and community health teams, meaning primary care providers and hospitals. And our goal is just to help older adults and those with diverse needs access care and support to remain at home and living um, healthy. Terrific, it's quite comprehensive. So how has SASH been impacted by the pandemic? Yeah, so SASH is largely intended to bring services into people's homes and uh, the buildings where they live. And unfortunately, due to COVID, we weren't really able to do that in the same way. Um, we were a resourceful bunch, though, and we increased our one-on-one -on -one phone calls with people. We held many of our programs last year outside during the summer, physically distanced and wearing masks. And we started using Zoom and other platforms like that to hold events uh, remotely. So uh, in broad terms, how have the participants in SASH been doing during this time? Yeah, I think it's fair to say that this year has been challenging in one way or another for everyone, our SASH participants included. Um, overall, though, I think our participants fared quite well. They already had a robust system of support with their SASH staff going into this. And although it might have looked a little different, that support stayed in place. So along with that and being a part of a larger SASH community, um, I think those things really did help. We saw very low numbers of um, outbreaks or illnesses among our participants. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a large part due to the support that they received from their SASH staff. Oh, that's fantastic. So let's meet one of the approximately 5,000 Vermonters who participate in SASH. Roni Lesage is one of the people of Cathedral Square, as you can see in this poster. She says she loves everything about Cathedral Square and being a SASH participant. She is joining us by Zoom today. Thanks you so much for being with us, Roni. Thank you. So how has the past year been for you? Well, I've uh, definitely become OCD of uh, cleaning and organizing. <laughs> you have so much time on your hands. Um, it's, it's been good. It's been good here at there. It's very safe here at there. Well, uh, that's, that's an, uh, important to feel that. What, what have you missed, you know, being able to do and, and what have you done instead? I missed uh, art, all the activities that they mm. have here, mostly art class, um, just, you know, being out with people. Yeah. Absolutely. Isolation has, has been huge this year. And in, in what ways have SASH and Cathedral Square helped out? Oh, my gosh. Memos and, and keeping us updated on what's going on. Um, the staff here are amazing. Cathedral Square is amazing. Um, feel very safe here. Mm. It's incredibly important. Well, well, stay put. I'm going to bring back Melissa Southwick, the, the director of SASH, um, back into the conversation, and, and we'll come back to Ronnie. But Melissa, how have SASH staff and participants worked together over the past year? Well, this has been a real team effort. So um, Cathedral Square's emergency response team really led the way in planning for the impact and how that would affect congregate housing. We were then able to take that information and share um, that along with guidance for all of our SASH sites statewide. 
Our administrative team hosted over 30 hour long webinars with our staff, mm -hmm. keeping them up to date information uh, on the pandemic, how it impacted the SASH program specifically, and then guidance to help keep staff and participants safe. Um, SASH and housing then implemented these guidances around the housing uh, and the SASH site. So it was things like they could, they had to wear masks, they couldn't congregate, they, um, you know, uh, visitors had to be uh, essential. And I think what happened was that SASH staff were so able to explain the reason that these precautions were required that it made it a little bit easier for people to comply. And really it was, um, you know, Cindy Zook is the care coordinator, the staff coordinator for Roni, and she said that they did a fantastic job of keeping each other safe. They, they all were looking out for one another. And so what kind of, it sounds like many successes, but at, I'm sure there were challenges also. What were some of those successes and challenges in keeping people safe and healthy over the last year? Yeah. Well, as I mentioned, we're really an in-person program. And so the biggest challenge we faced over the last year was trying to figure out how to do what we do um, remotely. And so uh, one of the things that I think was a huge success is that we know our participants so well, we built trusting relationships with them prior to this pandemic. So we were able to tailor the information in ways that each individual person would best receive it. You know, for some that was flyers or mailings, as Roni mentioned, for others, it was a really a one-on-one -on -one phone call to be able to talk through what was going on and the information that was being shared. Um, but we also, we branched out and tried new things. So up in Memorial County, there was a really robust bone builders program that was sorely missed during the beginning of the pandemic. And participants reached out and asked the SASH coordinator to offer it remotely. Uh, she said she wasn't an expert in Zoom, but she did learn. And so they offered this class remotely. And what we saw was actually increased attendance. Not only did the people that were missing it join, but people that hadn't joined previously did now that it was being offered in that remote fashion. Oh, that's fantastic. And, you know, how actually, how were SASH, uh, how was SASH able to help their participants get the vaccines once that started coming into um, play? Yeah, through the federal um, pharmacy program, we were able to bring clinics to a lot of our SASH sites right to the place where people live. And so that was hugely helpful. I think people didn't have to worry about transportation. Um, we held three clinics so that people could make sure that they got both shots if they were a little hesitant and they waited till the second clinic to get their first shot. There was a third one to follow so they could get their second shot as well. Um, and what we were able to do for people that didn't live in our buildings was um, we made phone calls. As we rolled out the age banding in Vermont, we called everyone that we worked with that was in that age banding and made sure that they wanted the vaccine, they could get the vaccine, it was scheduled, and they had transportation if they needed it. Fantastic. And Roni, I understand you were in uh, you were in the vaccine clinic, and and so how did that go for you? Oh, that went flawless. Uh, Cathedral Square and Sash worked so hard to to set this up for us here, and um, it was amazing. Felt very very safe with that too. Do you do you recommend people who might not have had the vaccine to to go for it? Was it was it okay? Absolutely, you? definitely get it. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, thanks. And so, Melissa, what is what has Sash learned during the pandemic that you would like to see to continue post pandemic? You had that great story from Lamoille County. Are there are there other things that you feel you might continue? Absolutely. Yeah, there are definitely a lot of lessons learned. So, at the end of 2020, we received iPads from state COVID relief funds that were given to VPQHC, which stands for the Vermont Program for Quality and Healthcare. Um, we've created lending libraries at all of our SASH sites. They now all have several iPad tablets that they can use to loan out for things like telehealth appointments, remote mental health appointments, remote SASH programming, which we're hoping to continue, and also socialization with family and friends. Another big takeaway was that we had uh, partnered with many people throughout the state, and I'm not going to be able to list them all, but a handful of them are AgeWell, the Vermont Food Bank, Everybody Eats, and JP to bring food to people that needed it throughout the pandemic. And just those partnerships that we fostered and seeing them play out to help people in a, in a crisis was fantastic. So I think the lessons that we've learned are that, you know, people can Zoom and some of our programs can be done remotely. So we're gonna certainly work on that going forward. Um, our partnerships are hugely helpful in the success of the program as well as benefiting our participants. And then I think my last takeaway is just that our SASH staff and our SASH participants are hugely resourceful and resilient. And they were able to come through this year 
of challenges and uh, unforeseen issues and do so in a way that was just really awe-inspiring. Um, you know, we did everything we set forth to do last year before we knew a pandemic was going to hit, and we kept people safe in the process. So I'm just beyond proud of all of them. Wow, it, it's fantastic. And Ronnie, because we have just a little bit more time, I, I know uh, Cindy is, is there for you. Um, how how are those caregivers, you know, those, those people that were there for you for STASH, a, a very important piece besides just fa family calls or something, but these were people that could be there for you. Yeah, they're always there to answer questions, mm. um, very supportive. Um, every All the staff here is amazing. The staff at Cathedral Square are amazing. I can't say enough for about them. Right, and they were and they were just there for you the all the time, yeah. all the time. Well, it's a remarkable program, and um, throughout the state, um, Melissa, how can viewers learn more about SASH and, and maybe even uh, find a way to participate? Well, thanks for asking, Fran. People can check out our website. It's www.sashvt.org, or they can give us a call at 802-863-2224. Okay, thank you so much, Melissa Southwick and Roni uh, Lesage. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's wonderful to hear about this program and how well you made it through this very, very difficult year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well.